Hi everyone, it's Nat here. Um, it's not Saturday, it's Tuesday. Um, just want to apologise to Stacey, whose video, or whose day, sorry, I'm hijacking. Um, I was away all weekend at the Bicon event, uh, so that's why I didn't have a chance to make a video and upload it on Saturday. Because I was having it an awesome time. Um, so yeah, the, the event was great. Um, I went to Scotland on Thursday. The conference uh, started on Friday to Sunday. Um, it was held at the University of Edinburgh um, and I managed to get a room in the halls of residence at the university. So uh, totally felt like I was back at university, um, which was great. Um, I just had a really good time. Um, attended loads of workshops, uh, workshops on um, a really good one on uh, non-binary gender, um, workshops on you know kind of what it is to be bi, um, how to make allies. Um, uh, I went to a trans safer space and took part in some uh, uh, research for a PhD um, on trans and sexuality um, by an amazing uh, psychologist and clinician called um, Christina Richards. Um, she's a trans woman who currently works in the gender identity clinic at Charing Cross in London. Um, so yeah, I just spent the whole weekend uh, chatting to really, really interesting people. Um, and for me, uh, mostly, it was just very invalidating, I suppose, uh, for a few months of feeling like I, you know, maybe I was a bit crazy. Um, you know, because most of the, the thoughts and conversations that I've been having about gender have been you know, with myself in my own head. So it was really good to talk about some of that stuff um, to people who could kind of go, you know, yeah, I know, I know exactly what that feels like or, you know, just to, to kind of know that other people are having the same experiences. Um, I, the Scottish Trans Alliance um, put on two film nights and we watched a couple of really good kind of trans themed films and after the second film on the Saturday night I spent about an hour talking with a guy called James um, who, was a, who is a trans guy who's about seven years into his transition now um, so he was able to answer all sorts of questions for me um, you know about transition about this, his own uh, personal thought process um, that led him to, to transition um, he was able to answer loads of questions for me about um, if you start testosterone, can you travel? Um, restrictions about kind of taking it um, abroad with you, you know, if you wanted to go on a long term kind of travelling expedition or if you wanted to relocate. So all of that was really, really helpful. Um, interestingly, James, uh, this trans guy, had said that before he transitioned, I asked him, did he feel like he was fully male before he transitioned? Um, and he said no, he just knew that he, he wasn't female, um, but he was so kind of utterly um, unhappy and miserable uh, that he kind of, you know, took a leap of faith and he said that he actually grew, his male identity didn't come naturally at the start, he grew into it, so um, I kind of thought that was really interesting as well. Um, and yeah, the difference, there, I think there's a lot of commonality between the bi and the trans community, more so than there is um, between the bi or the trans community and the LG community. Um, so I've been to loads of pride events um, and loads of kind of, you know, events run, you know, for lesbians or, or for gay men. Um, and the difference in how I felt in myself in a space that was bi and trans compared to the difference that I felt in a space that was lesbian or gay uh, for me was just massive um, and I definitely felt so comfortable um, in that space, uh, the space this weekend with, with bi and trans and, and people of all kind of, you know, gender expressions or, and, you know, kind of different sexuality um, expressions as well. So. Yeah, yeah, it was a great weekend. Um, so I should talk about the topic this week, which is uh, what has changed on your gender journey. Um, so I have been on this journey fairly f for a fairly short time. Um, and I would say for me, the biggest thing that has changed is I no longer feel uh, the same horrible anxiety now that I did whenever I first um, started to think about this or, or came to this realisation. 
Um, and in the beginning, you know, it was a bit heartbreaking. It, you know, it is is scary, and with that also came relief that I that I finally had a word. Um, you know, I finally kind of knew what was wrong with me. Um, so yeah, I mean, over the last few months, just kind of talking about it, um, talking to other people. Um, I told my best friend that I was kind of having these thoughts and these issues um, and she said that she would be my friend whether I, I asked her would she still be my friend if I was a bloke and she said that she would be my friend if I was a man, a woman or a dog which was really lovely um, and I also spoke to my GP and have asked to kind of get in the process or the waiting list for a appointment at the gender identity clinic in Belfast um, just to kind of have a look around and just to, to you know, progress a little further on my journey. Um, and my GP was was fantastic. Um, I waited for two weeks to get a, an appointment with this particular GP. Um, you know, she's worked there for a long time and I, I don't know if she's ever had anybody else come to her um, with these issues, but, you know, she let me kind of run well over my appointment time talking about it. Um, she was really interested. Um, but also she seemed to have, you know, uh, kind of a bit of a knowledge about it. And she actually said to me, um, she mentioned the word spectrum and, you know, the fact that everybody is on it somewhere. And, you know, she understood that it's about finding your place on that spectrum. Um, and she also said to me, you know, what is normal? So, um, yeah, it was, it was great to kind of um, be able to talk to her. And, I mean, so far, everybody that I've told... Um, has had a really good reaction you know nobody has been hostile to me in any way um, and that's been really encouraging and I think that's a lot to um, to do with why the anxiety is subsiding because you know the more people I talk about about it to and the kind of good reactions that I'm getting you know it gives me then confidence to you know to speak to other people about it so um, yeah feeling in a good place. Um, I know there's still a lot of work ahead of me um, and I know that probably for quite some time to come I'm still not going to feel you know completely settled um, but I feel like I'm heading in the right direction. Um, another thing that maybe has changed for me as well is that in the beginning whenever I was doing all of the research I was trying to fit myself into a term so I was coming across all these terms um, you know, androgynous, trans masculine, gender queer, butch, all of that stuff. And I was kind of um, going off kind of little mental tick lists in my head and going, oh, well, that's me because uh, I feel like that and that and that. So I must be, I must be that. Um, and I really let go of the need to find a label and just see where the journey takes me. Um, and see where I end up and then at that point I might think about giving myself a label um, but yeah overall I feel pretty good um, I kind of feel like I would just like six months without kind of mentioning the word gender to just give my brain a little bit of a break um, but apart from that everything else everything else is good so um, yeah I think that's everything. I have a beer to drink and my dinner is currently in the oven. So I better go and actually see see how that's doing. Um, so, yep, yeah, I hope everybody is having a good week and had a good weekend. Um, and I'll see you next week. Bye.